Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to take a look at the Phaser Editor. Now, what is the Phaser Editor? Well, it's basically a game editor that's third-party, built over top of the Phaser engine. Uh, now, Phaser itself is probably one of my favorite HTML5-based game frameworks out there. It's free, it's open source, it's available at phaser.io, and I've covered it a couple of times in the past. Um, it's just a great all-around HTML5-based framework, but what it doesn't have is a level editor, um, and that's kind of where Phaser Editor comes in. Now, this guy, I've actually wanted to do a video on it in the past. Um, I actually recorded the video, had everything ready for production, did a reinstall on my machine, and stupidly copied over it. So I never did get a video out, which was a bit of a shame, but it also had a very infuriating feature at the time. It's basically the free version used to nag you. Every X minutes it would come on and say, hey, you should buy me, you should buy me. And with the most recent release from uh, a couple of days ago, they actually updated uh, Phaser 1.5, a bunch of new functionality in there. But on top of that, they also changed the way that the free version works. So now it is much more tempting to go and check it out. Basically what they've done is they limit you to uh, 15 canvas files, five tile maps, and three texture atlases, which is actually quite reasonable. You can really evaluate the engine under those criteria. And then if you want to go ahead and buy Phaser, it's about 30 bucks for a year. Uh, you can buy it over two years for a cheaper amount, or you can get a lifetime unlocked, which covers all the various different versions. Now, one thing to be aware of with Phaser Editor is Phaser itself just released version 3.0. It's a very um, different branch of code. Uh, and Phaser Editor itself works with Phaser 2. Now, they've got a new version of Phaser Editor 2 is under development, which is going to use Phaser 3. Yeah, I know that's getting kind of confusing, but just do know if you want to support the next version or the current version of Phaser, the most recent version of Phaser, you're going to have to wait for that new version that's currently being rewritten. But don't worry, the current version is probably the one the majority of people are actually developing with. But this one of those things just to be aware of up front, and you'll understand why that is when we get into it a little bit more detail. Now, here is Phaser Editor. You probably immediately recognize it if you've ever used the Eclipse Jack. Java IDE. It's based on the Eclipse uh, core, um, which gives you a lot of the refactoring tools, project management tools, and all that kind of stuff, uh, customization, dockability, etc., that you inherit from the Eclipse IDE, but also gives you some of the complication. It's streamlined a lot, so it's a hell of a lot easier to learn than Eclipse, but there is a little bit of complication as a result. So now let's go ahead and create our first project. So let's go new, uh, and I'll create an ex example project. See, we've got a couple of different built-in freebie examples. We're going to use Sunnyland. In this case, there's also, you'll notice there's a bunch of templates and examples that we can work with from there, including tons of phasers examples, but we'll use a full-blown game demo. Uh, go ahead and create it, and yeah, we're good with that. So here is a phaser project. Uh, you can see a, a sample level here. So you notice up here it says level.canvas. Well, Canvas is essentially the organizational unit for um, Phaser Editor, and it's kind of how everything is organized together. And again, it's also probably the first big limitation you're going to run into with that free version. So you see in this particular example, we have a lot of canvases. We've got all these different sprite canvases here all the different uh, prefabs that go together to make up your scene. We'll come back and uh, look at that in a minute. But we also got our states. Now, states are essentially like levels or um, game chunks, depending on how you organize your game. But basically, a state is a very important concept in the phaser world because it's more or less, you know, you'd have a state for main menu, main game, uh, end credits, that kind of thing. That's how you'd organize things in the states. So what we're actually seeing here is levels are being organized into states. So level.canvas is showing up right here. Let's look at a simpler one. Here's title screen.canvas. And this is very simple. It's a uh, graphic title screen. So you see here you've got um, the text, you've got credits.txt, you've got the title, graphic, foreground, background. Pretty straightforward, nothing special going on there. But now let's look at the code that's automatically attached to it. And what you're seeing here is this is what your level editor is generating. This is one of those things that make Phaser Editor very, very, very cool, is in fact, it is a code generator. So it's writing Phaser code for you. This is all perfectly valid Phaser code. You can take it outside of the editor once you're done, and you're off to the races. You'll notice right here, that's where the stop. So all of this code up here is being generated when you, um, you make changes in the editor. So I'll go back here to the canvas. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So here we have the background layer set. Uh, actually, let's use the title. So the title is at 63x. So let's change that to 65. So we're going to move it over slightly. And let's go back to the code. And you'll notice here. So now 
it's 65x for the title. So it is a straight out code generator. It does it flawlessly. I've never had it corrupt my code or anything like that. And then your own personal logic goes below the comment that says here and generate a code. So this is where you go about writing your own code. Now I'll show you creating a prefab completely from scratch in a second, but that is essentially how things work. And you'll notice here uh, when the game start game function is called, it does a state change to load level one. So that's where that would come in. So let's switch back over. Here is your typical game level. Let's go ahead and actually run this so you can see what kind of game we're dealing with. So here is the world. Here is your camera. Here is your player object. You can see right there. They'll show up over here. Um, various different pro eh, right there. So you see the various different properties for that guy. And on top of that, we've got um, a lot of things we can configure here. So we can do arcade physics for this guy. Um, we can do multiple animations. So you see here, we've got idle, skip, blah, blah, blah. And they're grayed out because that's actually being inherited from the prefab over here. And we'll generate our own prefab in a second. So you see exactly how that works. But let's run our game. So project on phaser game. And this will go ahead and fire off our title screen. Here's our game. So pretty cool, works out quite well, very straightforward. You can see it creates a capable game, runs it in a browser. There's also the option to run it experimentally embedded inside of here. But all told, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Same with your, your levels composed of instances of uh, various different assets, such as you know, your stars, your plants, etc. And you'll also notice there's a lot more going on at this level. There's this background graphic going on here. There's this whole big world going on over here. Well, if we look down here, we'll actually see that this world itself is one big tiled map. So if I turn this guy off, you'll see exactly how much of the world is being composed of that. So it's pretty impressive going on there. What a tile map is, is basically it is a file that is generated using a third party tool, generally uh, the tiled level editor, which by the way, I've done plenty of tutorials on. So if you wanna learn more about it, it is available there, but it's a very common format, TMX, that um, the editor is in turn loading and you can interact with it, you can change the layers, etc. but you cannot create tiled maps directly in this guy, but you do have full support for them. Uh, they can be brought in, you can see the various different tiled layers, so you can have, um, access to them, etc. You've got access to the underlying tile map um, and the, all the various different individual tiles, but you can't author tile maps within this guy. So you still need that tile map editor, which on the bright side is actually completely free. So it does have full tile map supports though, and that's probably how you'd make most of your games. And the other thing that's going on here is this background graphic. So that is, there's a background layer and a foreground layer. So right here, and I'll show you exactly what they do by turning them off and on. So there is the background layer or middle ground, full background. Let's turn the middle ground back on like so and like so. Uh, pretty straightforward, otherwise you're straight out level editing. You'll notice here, we can create new items over here by um, you know, Sprite. We can change the different functionality for Sprite. So we could add, um, we could change the uh, physics body on it. We can change the arcade settings, uh, the collision shape. Uh, we can have it switch between two different types. We can convert it to type. We can change the texture attached to it, etc. I come up here to objects and you've got these um, basically layout functionality. So you can move things around, scale them, uh, rotate them, you edit the anchor point. Uh, you can rise and lower it in the Z ordering on the map. You can align things. You can group them together and you can parent stuff together so it'll automatically inherit the movements of a parent. Pretty much all the layout stuff you would expect to see is in here. So it's pretty cool, pretty straightforward. Um, and then finally, let's go ahead and take a look at what a prefab, how a prefab works. So all these various different things that go together and make instances. So we got a chest in here, so we got a bunch of them going on. Well, those are ultimately just instances, multiple instances of a prefab. So let's go and make a prefab. Now prefab is basically how you would logically organize your game. This is what you break your game up into pieces. Those pieces would generally be things prefab. So um, enemies, players, uh, movable objects in the world, etc., like that. So you can have, you know, just straight up graphic. It doesn't need to be a um, a prefab to work, uh, but you can also uh, do it that way. So go ahead, create new. And what we want to do in this case is create a sprite prefab file. I pick its parent folder. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add it to the assets folder. So and sprites, and we will call this guy my sprite, like so. Go ahead and create it. And then let's pick a sprite for it. I'm just going to go ahead and use the instructions. So just that image. 
and done. Oh, you also have the option of picking uh, JavaScript 5, JavaScript 6, or TypeScript. I skipped past that there. So basically, the, the code controlling this, you can check, pick which kind of language actually controlled it. Uh, so there is my sprite that I just added right here. Now, there's another little piece of um, process we need to do here. Go into the preloader, like so, and double click it. And we just need to tell it to actually load our script. So plus script, like so, and browse and we add our new sprite. Now, I kind of wish this process was automated. I'm not entirely certain why it's not, uh, but it isn't. Okay, so we now have access to our new uh, my sprite right here, and you'll notice that that automatically, so open up the editor, there you can see the end results. We could obviously add and configure more stuff here, and as we do it, it will, so if I move this guy, uh, object, move, if I move this guy, oh, um, move him over and down slightly from the origin like that and then we look at the code you will see it automatically Ooh, where'd it go huh thought it would have been there well anyways uh what we now want to do is actually add some logic to this guy so what i'm going to do is override so my sprite dot proto Prototype dot. Now the cool thing is you're seeing you got full code completion, you got full hint highlighting, you've got um, it linking back to the documentation, so you can immediately jump into the documentation or see previews of the objects you're working with. So this is actually one of the friendliest ways of actually doing phaser development, even without using the automated generators. It's nice that way. Plus I didn't have to install or configure phaser or anything. You literally just download this guy, extract the zip file, and run it. And phaser is in there, pre-configured and ready to go. So all I'm going to do is hook up the update function. It's new function and I always forget this semicolon so let me get that right away and all we're gonna do this is basically overriding the function that's called every single time the frame is passed um, so we're gonna handle the update on a frame-by-frame -frame basis and this is all I'm gonna do again full code completion uh, in our intelligence going on here now let's do y plus plus it's like so so we just created our own um, prefab so we could create as many of these as we want in our world so let's go back here and add one in so boom all right so there you go so there is our newly created prefab and when i run this game after saving this guy project run tada there you go you see it running off the world doing its own code on a per frame basis so that is basically how you go ahead and script game logic and you know over here, you logically group the functionality together. So obviously I could have multiple uh, values in here. So if I want to add um, another sprite in for whatever reason, if I want to add some text to this, like so, I can do so. And that will be part of it. So you can do uh, some pretty cool stuff here um, in a very simple way. And then you can organize it this way um, and that's kind of it. It's a very straightforward tool. It's a very powerful tool. Um, and it just makes phaser programming just that much nicer. So again, it is available at um, phasereditor2d.com. Again, I'll link that down below. And it is commercial software, so there's a premium version. Once you run into those limitations, and as I said earlier, the premium version, it's available from the download section, um, is available via Unlock. And you're talking 30 bucks or I forget the exact value to go to the other values. It might be here. All right, so you're looking one year, two years is $45, or lifetime is 75. Now, I don't know for certain that that lifetime unlock will go to the next version, but I have to assume it does. But all the same, you know, reasonable price for software, uh, nice overtime discount going on there. If you do find yourself liking it and you're hitting those constraint limitations, uh, certainly worth considering buying this guy. Uh, I'm all for commercial software, if it makes sense, makes your life better. And I think this is a very reasonable price. So at the end of the day, that is Phaser Editor for the uh, Phaser HTML5 framework. Great little tool. Uh, definitely one I think more people should be aware of, especially if you are working in HTML5 development using Phaser. It does make your life easier. It organizes things nicely. I've only scratched the surface of what it's actually capable of, but pretty much everything you need to make a game has been added, and it is still using Phaser behind the scenes, so all the documentation that currently exists for Phaser is still viable for you, etc. It's just an all-around better way to do Phaser development as long as you're not using Phaser 3. 
So again, Phaser Editor, let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Are you working with Phaser? What do you think of the fact that it's commercial software? What do you think of the pricing scheme? And all that other stuff. But hopefully some of you guys found that interesting and useful, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.